and uh, welcome to Java Programming 1. Uh, in these lectures, we are going to learn the basic concept of computer systems. So this is our unit one, part one lecture in Java Programming course. Uh, so again, introduction, I'm going to start with the fundamental concept of computer systems. So example, we're going to learn the components of a computer such as the hardware, the software, the CPU, memory, etc. So first, what is a hardware? In computer system, a hardware is again a physical component of the computer. And you also will use the term tangible parts of the computer, such as the keyboard, uh, CPU, memory. So again, it's the physical component of the computer. A software is normally the programs and normally we don't, we can't touch it. It's not physical component or uh, tangible parts. It's intangible. So a software is something that we cannot touch and feel it. And normally it's a programs and also a data. A programs always need a data to again to process. So a program is a series of instruction. So normally the software carries the instructions that the computer have to perform. And normally our programs is always reside in a hardware part. Example would be the memory, the hardware components such as the hard drive or the disk, flash drive. This is where we can store our programs or the software. So software must be stored in a storage device which is a hardware component. So for a computer to work, we need both the hardware and software. So a computer requires both the hardware and the software. So first, let's go through some of the components of a computer system, the hardware. The hardware, the main components of a computer system will be the CPU, the main memory, the input device such as keyboard, mouse, and then the output device such as a printer and also monitor. So for a computer to work, or in short, what is a computer? A computer is any electronic devices that have an input device that make it possible to get an input. So input device is a hardware. And secondly, it should have a central processing unit you should have some form of a processing unit, which is also a hardware. Then you should have at least some output device where the result can be displayed or print out. And also a storage device where we can store the result. Also, you should have a communication capabilities whereby we can share data, information, or resources with other hardwares or other computer system. So a computer, again, is an electronic device that can take an input, process the input, store the result, which is the output, and also be able to share the result with other devices, which is the networking system. So a CPU, we say, will be the brain of the computer. This is where, again, all the processing takes place. A main memory is a temporary story device where we have to store our program or data when we want to again process or do some work on online or on the computer. So here we can see the monitor screen, the keyboard, the mouse and touch screen. This I again the monitor screen will be the Apple device, keyboard, mouse, and touch screen will be our input devices. So that's why we have IO stand for input Apple devices that will facilitate the user interaction. The central process unit, unit is where the, again, the processing takes place. And then the memory, memory we store our data there. So we can have the hard disk, or USB flash drive, this will be a permanent storage place. So we call the hard disk and also the USB flash drive as the secondary memory device. 
uh, we have the RAM and the ROM, and we will discuss about that later on. So we have at least two categories of software. Uh, a software that normally interacts with the computer hardware is called a system software. So a system software is a software that interacts with the computer hardware. Then we also have the application software. Application software is a software that performs a specific task, such as uh, computer games, word processing, Excel, uh, any task. So operating system is a system software. And what operating system normally does is that it controls all the machine activities. It interacts with all the computer hardware, such as the CPU, the keyboard, any, any hardware device connected to the computer, operating system interacts with it. And we have different types of operating systems, such as Windows, we have the Mac OS, we also have Unis, and also we have Linux. Also, we have two types of uh, operating system. One can be the command-driven interface, whereby we have to enter the command, uh, a black screen, such as DOS, and also Unis has. Then we have the graphical user interface, which is the going. Uh, more or less uh, Windows, we can interact with the computer using our mouse and icons on the desktop, etc. So, signals, we have two types of signals, analog and digital. We know in computer system, the signal that we use is digital, which is more or less the binary number system, 0101. Analog mostly used like a signal, radio signals, etc. So for example, if I connect a computer to an internet using a modem, the reason I'm using a modem because if the internet, we are using a telephone line, a telephone signal is always analog. But a computer always uses digital, understandably digital signals. So we have a modem so that when information is, is running on the telephone line, it will be analog before the information will get into the computer, it will go through the modem. And the modem will again convert the analog signal to digital signal so that the computer will understand. The same thing, the information or the data is going out of the computer. The modem also have to, again, translate it from, or convert it from, analog, uh, from digital to analog so that it can go through the telephone line. So those are, again, the two basic ways to store and manage data. Analog, analog is continuous in direct proportion to the data represented. Example, actually the common example is music on a record album or telephone line. Then digital is the formation is broken down into two pieces. Each piece is represented separately. And again, digital is normally the understanding of computer system. Computer data or signal is always in digital. So here yeah, we say give digital information, computers store all information digitally, whether it's numbers, text, images, graphic, audio, video, program instruction, all the data or the signal are in digital. Uh, example here we can represent, for example, every character is stored as a number, including space, digit, and punctuations, and corresponding upper and lower cases letters are separate characters. And here we have a standard, in the computer system, we have a standard uh, code for representing data, such as characters, symbols, etc. And the most common one is the ASCII mm -hmm. code which is ASCII, ASCII code standard. So for example, uh, I want to enter high header. H to computer is represents 72. And we see that we have two type of H. Uppercase H is 72, but lowercase H will be 104. So every character, we can also see a comma, which is a symbol, is represented by 44. And then binary numbers, which is the most important. That's the machine language. 
binary numbers actually by means two. So binary numbers means we have only two states, either zero or one. Or sometimes we may say zero is off and one is on. Each term here, zero or one is called a bit. And normally a character is represented as a byte. A byte is eight bits. So eight bits makes one character or a symbol, etc. So this is a bit permutation. If I have only one bit, the possible permutation is only two because it's only one, zero, one. If I have two bits, the possible permutation will be two to the power two. The binary is two and I have the binary, the base is two and I have only two bits. So the number of bits I have will be the exponent, so two to the power two. So here we can see that zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Now, if it's a three bit, it will be eight because the base again is two because it's binary numbers. We have only two digits, but the number of bit is three. So it will be two to the power three. And the combination will be zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero. Again, if you count all this, it will be eight. Then if it's four bit, it will be 16 because it will be two to the power four. So that's the bit permutation step. So Permutation basically means the possible, uh, I will use the term combination. Uh, combination, if it's combination, then zero, one, and one, zero are the same. So permutation is a combination, but the order of the bits is also very important. So zero, one, and one, zero are not the same. But with combination, zero, one, and one, zero is the same. So we use the term permutation. There's a different permutation combinations. So that's what I said earlier. Bit permutation, all we need is two to the power n. The reason why we are using two because a binary number, the base is two. And the, we came up with the base two because we have only two possible digits. Now, how many bits you have will be your exponent. So two to the power four, if I have four bits, then it will be again 16. 2 to the power 5, 5b, five 2 to the power 5 is 32 possible combination, permutation. And then there's a quick check here. There's a question here, say how many bits will you need to represent each of the 50 states using a unique permutation of bits? Now, if I'm going to represent 50 United States, if I use 2 to the power, let's say 4, 2 to the power 4 is 16, so 16 is too small. I need the possible value that at least it will be 50 or a little bit over 50. So now 2 to the power 5 will be 32, which is not good. 32 is less. But 2 to the power 6 will be 64. Okay, 64 is good. That's why that 64 is greater than 50. Because when we move from 2 to the power 5 to 6, we can't get 50, so it's between the two. So we use the two to the power six. So that's what we explain here. Two to the power five is 32. So five bits is not possible. Six bit will give me two to the power six will be 64. So six bit is what we are using. So we start with Alabama, zero, 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 Alaska, and we go throughout, we should get all the 50 states. Maybe it will left with some few bits again. Since it's 64, 14 will be left. But if we take four before five, we get only 32. So we need at least 18 more states. So the possible bits, number of bits is six. That will cover the whole 50 states. Seven will be too much because seven will be 128 too much. So next we go to computer architecture. A computer normally consists of at least a five major components. And we can see it in a diagram here. For example, we have the central processing unit. We have the memory section. We also have the Apple device. We also have the storage device. And we should have the input device, which is not really here. But we can see a bus is normally I would say it's a, a line or 
it's a connector that connects all the components together. A controller is a device that controls a specific device at So for example, here we have a disk controller. So this controller controls again, coordinate the disk flash drive and hard drive. We may have a controller for, let's say, a motherboard or other device we can think of. So that's what, uh, actually there's one more term here. We have what we call the periphery device. A periphery device is any device that is connected to the computer system. So for example, if I connect a printer, then we can have a printer controller here. Uh, yes, the other periphery devices. A camera. So any device, hardware device that is connected to the computer system is called the periphery devices. So we said earlier about memory. A memory normally consists of what we call the cells. The cells here are the boxes. Each box has its own unique address, as we can see on the left side. So the first cell, the address is 9278. The second cell, 9279. Again, the address has to be unique. So two cells cannot have the same address. And normally, when we are storing data, uh, the operating system randomly allocate the memory space and also where to store the data. So in Java programming, we don't, when we declare variable or we get a memory location, we don't need to worry about uh, where the data is stored. The operating system does the work for us. Uh, one thing with memory is that it's, it's volatile, which means when the power of the computer is on, the data is there. But when the computer goes off, the data is gone. So we can't save our data in the mem memory. Only the power of the computer is on. So we normally store our data in a secondary storage device, such as the hard drive, the flash drive, etc. So this example of storing information. And we can see that the data store against binary. The storage capacity also, we have the unit of a storage capacity. Kilobyte means 1,000 bytes, megabytes, million, gigabytes, terabytes, then petabyte. Now, for us, as a human being, we are zooming 1,000 is three zeros. Mega is million, which is, again, six zeros. But actually, it's not like that. The actual unit, for example, kilobyte means 2 to the power 10, which will give us 1024. Now, 2 to the power 20 will be over 1 million. 2 to the power 30 will be over 1 billion. So it's not as that. But with human beings, we normally get used to the zero. So we say gigabyte means 1 billion. But actually, maybe to be 1 billion, 350 million, 100 or 20, it's a very long value. So uh, we normally keep, we ignore the, the actual values and use the zeros. So mem mem memory, as I said earlier, is a volatile, which means you store the data only when there's a power. When the computer power is off, again, all the data is gone. Secondary memory devices are non-volatile, which means we can store the data for permanent, such as the hard drive. Whether there's a power or there's no power, the data is stored. Now we have a RAM versus ROM. RAM is volatile, but ROM is non-volatile. ROM is a permanent storage device. Normally ROM will be an instruction and store somewhere in our computer system or the motherboard somewhere to perform a special instruction. So that's why it's only read-only memory. We cannot manipulate it or change it, etc. It's only read. And the term RAM stands for random access memory. So both RAM and ROM are random direct access advices, devices, but ROM is permanent. We can't change the story, but RAM 
changes even goes off if the computer is off. Next is the central processing unit. In the central processing unit, we have a three execute cycle of operation. First, we need to fetch the data in a CPU. We fetch the data, then the data has to be decoded. After it's decoded, then we execute. Then we start all over again, fetch a new data, decode, execute. Decode means we have to determine what the instruction is. Then execute means we again run out to the instruction. So this is a continual cycle, a continual fetch, decode, execute cycle. And this is what the CPU always does. And the CPU have a major component and the three major components are given here. One is the arithmetic logic unit. Arithmetic logic unit normally is a component or the part of the CPU that does all the arithmetic operations and also the logical operations such as true or false. If X is greater than zero, then print Y which means if the condition is true, we print Y. If the condition is false, we don't print. So those are logical operation. Control unit normally is the coordinator. So the control unit will make sure that we have data that is coming into the CPU. And after the processes is finished, we make sure that data go out of the CPU and store in the right place. Make sure we don't have overflow. Overflow means we have too much uh, data to process than the CPU can hold because CPU also have a, what we call the registers. Registers is a memory storage in a CPU. So if we, and it's a very small storage place. So if control unit didn't work well and it allow many data to be stored in registers and the registers can hold no more data, then we have what we call overflow or we have information to process, but the register is empty, then we're going to have underflow. So these are the three major components of the CPU. First is arithmetic logic in a unit, which we call the ALU. It will perform all the arithmetic operations and logical operations also. Control unit make sure that the coordination between the memory and the CPU, how data flow is in good order. Registers are small memories inside the CPU. So any data that the CPU is processing, it's always in the registers. So the speed of a CPU is controlled by the system clock. And also the system clock generates an electronic pulse at regular intervals. And we say the pulses coordinate the activities of the CPU. And also the speed of the CPU is measured in Giga S. Giga S here means billion S, which means we can perform billion tasks. And S means one cycle per second. So we can perform one tax per second. So next we go to what is a network. In computer, a network means when you have two or more computers that are connected together and they can be able to share data or even uh, communicate with each other and share other resources, if we can share hardware resources. For example, is that we go to our computer lab, we see one printer with over 20 computers connected to it. That's a network system. All these computers are sharing only one hardware printer. So most computers are connected to some kind of network. Again, even our cell phone is always connected to a network system. If I have an internet, internet is the largest ne computer network system on earth in this world. Here we have all computers around the globe connected together through satellite and other means. So each computer in the network could be directly connected to every other computer in the network. This is called a point-to-point -point connection. Then we have most computers share a single communication line. 
adding a new computer to the network is relatively easy. So here we have like six or seven computers, computers connected to one line, and we call it the backbone. So this is an example of a lab, computer lab. We have all these computers, they are all connected to one printer, so they are all sharing the same printer. Now, network, there are different categories based on the region that they cover. So for example, we have a local area network. Local area network normally covers a small distance. It can be a one room computer lab or a one building. Then we have a wide area network. A wide area network is like the internet. Here we may have a network that is connected between countries globally. And what is an internet? So internet is a wide area network where we have computers connected all over the world globally. And one of the features of the internet is called the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web make it possible for us to share electronic document online, which we normally call web pages or websites. Now, in order to see a website or a web page or electronic document, we need what we call the browsers, the internet browsers. It's a software that make it possible for us to view a document online. So, an example of a web browser can be the Internet Explorer, which is normally the Windows or Microsoft. We also have Safari, and we also have Firefox and also Google Chrome, et cetera. So resources that can be presented in World Wide Web are so many, from text to audio to video. For example, we have uh, uh, YouTube, Google Search, et cetera. So text, graphic, video, sound, audio, even executable programs is also possible. And one thing that makes World Wide Web more interesting is that most of all these electronic documents, they are connected together, they are linked together. So we have a link in one pay web page that will take me to another web page or another website. So example of a World Wide Web, the address can be www.cnn.com or www.vt.edu student, etc. Now to create the electronic document or even a web page, we can use a script language called the HTML. HTML stands for hypertext markup language. And normally this language can be used to create a web page. So we're going to end here. And again, our, this is our first lecture in Java course which we call a Java programming one. And we are going to cover topics again from basic concept of Java, for example, variable, data type, how to print, output, input, all the way to basic concept of object-oriented programming. So again, wish everybody the best. Thank you.